What's up, lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I am the Malt Activist and thank you for joining me today. Today, we're not reviewing anything. Today, we are going to talk about independent bottlers. Now, most of you know what independent bottlers are, but for those of you who don't, let me give you a quick rundown. It's essentially independent companies who will buy spirit from existing distilleries, for example, Artbeg or Glenlivet or Glenfiddich or Oban or Longmorn or Strath Isla or Baudelaire or Lagavulin or Lefroyd or Buna Haven or Glen Talkers or uh, Glen Kinchy or Mortlock or oh, you get the point. What they will do is they will buy spirit from them. They will buy full casks basically, right? So they'll buy an entire cask and then they will take it for themselves and then they will bottle it under their name. Now, some of them have naming rights, i.e. they can call that whiskey uh, from the distillery that it's come from, for example, Bunahaven, or sometimes they don't get naming rights. And so it becomes a secret bottle or a mystery bottle. And this is what I want to talk to you about today. Because the second you step outside of the world of original bottlings. And when I say original bottlings, these are bottles that have been, you know, bottled by the distillery themselves. So you see at the back here, this is an original Benriach because it's been bottled by Benriach. And that's what OB stands for, right? Original bottle. In contrast to that, you have IB's independent bottles or independent bottlings, independent bottlers. And what these guys will do is they will buy the spirit and they will bottle it on, under their own name. Now, the cool thing about independent bottlings is that you get to taste whiskeys that the original distillery kinda had never intended for you to taste, okay? Now, for example, Buna Havin, I think about almost 100% of their range, I think I'm pretty good, uh, pretty sure of that number, uh, are subject to some sort of sherry slash wine maturation. But I have with me today an independent bottle of Bunahaven that is only six years old and bottled at cost strength. What does that mean? That means I get to taste a side of Bunahaven that I would never ever have been able to if it wasn't for this independent bottling which is amazing for whiskey lovers like myself because we will now go out and we will find new flavors and new profiles that those distilleries would not have originally anticipated. And this is all thanks to independent bottlings. Now, you may wonder why, why do independent bottlers exist? And, I, and, and the simple answer is economics, money. Distilleries need to make money. And one of the quickest way they can make money is to sell their new make spirit or young spirit that's maturing in a cask to independent companies, which is, it's, it's good money for them, right? For the distilleries. The independent bottler will then take that cask, right? Maybe not even physically, they'll just sign a paper and get ownership, uh, ownership of it. They'll take that cask and they might mature it for a further few years. They might experiment with it and put it in a, in a, slight, in a different cask maybe, and then, at some point where they feel that it's good enough to be bottled, they'll bottle it and they'll sell it. And that opens up a whole new world of whiskey flavors. While I have a few independent bottlings, there's over like a hundred, you know, all across Europe, a hundred, maybe even 200. I don't know the number, but it's a lot. Uh, all over Europe doing precisely this. So I want to share some of them with you today. Let's start with my personal favorite, the Old Malt Cask. Now this old malt cask belongs to the Hunter Lang company. Now Hunter Lang, uh, very, very, very big independent bottlings. They released this specific series. It's called the old malt cask. And I believe all of them come in at 50% ABV. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can see that. Yeah, and they have a standard 50% ABV. And I have yet, I have yet to come across an OMC old malt cask that has disappointed me. In fact, one of my prized possessions is this 23 year old uh, Port Ellen, also bottled at 
a tasty 50%. By the way, this one is awesome. And this is a good example, right? Because if I wanted to get myself an original bottle of Port Ellen, right, from Diageo as part of the special release, well, that would have cost me something like 1500 pounds. This bottle cost me something like three to 400 pounds a few years ago. It's still mad, it's still expensive, but it's kind of manageable if you really want to try and drink a Port Ellen. So, old model cost from Hunter Lang, uh, usually a good bet. Another one of my favorites is the Signatory Vintage Series. And this is from Signatory. Uh, and this is their cost strength collection. So this Kleinlich, um, distilled in 95, 23 years old, bottled at 51.8%, uh, is something that I picked up. Again, not very, very, very expensive. Uh, maybe about, hmm, I want to say less than 200 pounds. Uh, but you know what? The thing is, Kleinlich are never going to release, or maybe they will, I don't know, but they don't have a 23 year old Kleinlich out there right now. You know, and it's uh, and it's not served at cost strength. So, where do I go? I go to I go to places like this and find interesting interesting whiskeys that I want to try. Then there is Caden Heads. I love Caden Heads. So Caden Head uh, single cost is I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, owned by the same owners as Springbank. JJ Mitchell. I think so. I want to say I'm 100% sure, but I'm not. But for example, uh, here's a Glen Talkers, uh, 27 years old. Ooh, that's a lot of glare. 27 years old, bottled at 54.4%. Where am I going to get a whiskey like this? I am not. And hence, what do I do? I go independent. I go independent. Mm. We have one from Douglas Lang. This is a nine-year-old Mortlock, bottled at 46%. So obviously they've they've uh, they've watered it down a little bit. And this is one of 357 bottles. Uh, not my most favorite whiskey ever, but it's not the 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 bottler's fault. It's it's that I have yet to meet a Mortlock that I like. Now another uh, bottler that's doing really really good are the Whiskey Barrel and uh, they're an online website as well where you can buy whiskeys from but they're doing their own bottles and they're called the TWB Originals, the Whiskey Barrel Originals and for example here I have a, I have a six year old, six year old Bunahagen bottled at 59.7%. I'm never going to taste the Buna Haven that's been matured only in first fill bourbon barrels from the distillery because that's not what they do. That's not their thing. All Buna Havens are subjected to some level of sherry slash wine maturation. So for me to drink this uh, type of whiskey is, is quite special because I get to see another different flavor profile, another side of the distillery, which would not have been possible if it wasn't for independent bottling. So. Uh, this is a good one if you want to get your hands on this. Then there's a there's a 10 year old Balblair, also at cost strength 59.4 percent. This is matured in first fill Olorosa hogsheads. Interesting, right? An Olorosa hogshead. Um, we were talking about signatory vintage. Here's a different type of signatory vintage. This is the um, one bottle specially for the whiskey barrel. And this is the Edrador. I've uh, I've done a review of this, and I'll put a link up of this right now. And this is one of the finest, finest whiskeys I've had in a long, long time. This ten-year-old Edrador. Ah, Berry Brothers and Rudd. Bre Berry Brothers and Rudd were basically a grocery store and a wine shop, and then they started doing their own uh, own bottlings. And this one is off uh, Lefroig. This, I think, is a 14-year-old Lefroy. This is uh, distilled in 1998, bottled in 2010. No, so this is like a 12-year-old Lefroy. Tasty as hell at 58.7%. Matured in first fill, yeah, matured in first fill bourbon barrels. Uh, what else? We have, ooh, Chieftains. Chieftains is another one. 
they normally do high end bottles this one is a nine year old Glen Elgin bottled at 46% again this particular one not one of my uh, absolute favorites uh, but I've had a few chieftains that have been outstanding so keep those in mind here's another signature vintage this is the uh, Edrador but this is bottled at 46% some sulfur in this one I've just come across this one this is called the golden cask I like the bottles I honestly got it because of the bottle I like the design and the print on the bottle that's why I got it and this is a this is a nine-year-old Longmorn Again, bottled at 59.4%. I'm not 100% sure who this belongs to. Could be just the golden cask. And what I like about independent bottles is it has all the information up front. So you know exactly, you know the cask number, you know when it was bottled, you know when it was distilled, everything. This is, I really like that about independent bottlings. And here's another one. This is called the Single Malts of Scotland. Here we go. Bottled at 48%. This is called parcel number three. This is a, this is the Glen Elgin. This is a, oh, this is a, this is a vatting of four casks. Ah, that's interesting. Vatting of four casks is still in 2007, bottled 2020 by Elixir Distillers. Ooh, these, ah, this is the whiskey exchange. Elixir Distillers are the, uh, the new distillery that's opening up in Isla, by the way. Yeah, near Port Ellen. Uh, and it's uh, the, the chaps uh, of the Whiskey Exchange are behind that. So I think this is, this is their bottling, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, there you have it, man. And the reason I did this uh, quick video is just to say, get out of the OBs. And there's a whole new world of independent bottlers waiting for you. The only disadvantage is there is no, or there's very less literature or reviews around them. So you don't know what you're buying, if it's going to be any good. But what I have discovered is pick three or four of your favorite independent bottlers. And for me, those are the Signatory Vintage, um, Douglas Lang, Cadenhead, Hunter Lang, I guess. And even uh, TWB, the, the Whiskey Barrel Originals. And I think, uh, oh, there's another one. The, the Boutique Whiskey Company, again, doing very good stuff. I don't have a uh, Boutique Whiskey Company bottle on me to share with you, but they're doing some good stuff. Uh, so yeah, you know, pick three or four of those and then pick whiskeys that you want to try. So for example, I would love to try Cast Strength Glenlivet's. Uh, those are exceptional. I would love to try um, Buna Havens or uh, or traditionally uh, traditionally uh, sherried whiskies, uh, but in first fill bourbon. So, for example, a Buna Haven, right? So matured in first fill bourbon. Very interesting. The other day we had a Dalmore, and I'm not a big fan of Dalmore. Let me assure you, but that first fill bourbon Dalmore served at cast strength is one of the tastiest whiskies I've had in a very very long time. There you go. So that was my little uh, that was my little public service announcement, uh, trying to promote independent bottles. Uh, they, they're almost always cheaper. Uh, they're good value for money, uh, and uh, more importantly, you get to taste uh, a flavor profile that you would not normally be able to taste if it came straight from the distillery and go out, you know, experiment and find stuff and drink it and share it and, and, you know, form your own opinion. And, uh, that's it. So <laughs> thank you. I hope this video helped. I hope you can go out and, and buy something interesting. Uh, if you do, if you bought something new and you liked it, please, uh, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, thank you for joining me for this whiskey review. I'm the Malta activist until next time. Peace.